Are recreational drones bad for wildlife? I'm going to do my best to answer this question coming up right after this. Hi guys, my name is Eddie. I'm a wildlife biologist and on this channel, I teach you how to enjoy nature. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Recreational drones are becoming increasingly popular. More and more people are flying them everywhere and they're also being used for a lot of professional purposes as well. For any of you guys who have seen my videos before, as you know, I have a drone and I love flying my drone. I use it to take a lot of video footage for a lot of my videos. I've brought it to a lot of cool places. So I definitely have a lot of sympathy for filmmakers and other people who just love to fly drones. But obviously as drones have become more and more popular, there is a lot of concern over various things such as safety to humans, of course, but also wildlife biologists in recent years have started to study the impacts of drones on wild animals. And whether you are a biologist or a naturalist or not, no matter who you are, this is definitely something that you should be concerned about because the conservation of wildlife is important. And since I've done more research on this subject, I am being way more cautious with how I fly my drone. So if you are flying a drone and getting it close to a wild animal, following it around, clearly harassing it, Common sense tells all of us that that's probably going to negatively affect that animal if anything. But what if you are flying your drone high above a wild animal? Or what if you are flying your drone within a certain distance? Or what if you happen to fly it close to an animal but it doesn't appear like that animal moves? And just overall, how bad are drones for wildlife? There's a lot of unanswered questions. So in this video, I'm just gonna take a look at what the science says so far and then I'm gonna give you guys some recommendations because to be honest, I got a drone a couple years ago and I've abided by all of the legal standards that I've had to fly it with. But if you were looking to minimize your impact on wildlife, I'm not sure if all of the laws out there actually go by the standards that you actually should use. I think that there are some specific guidelines that you really should pay attention to. I'm gonna go over those. Let's go through some of the science. There's been plenty of documented cases of drones essentially chasing wildlife, harassing wildlife, and their behavior has clearly been affected. For example, there's been accounts in Zion National Park where a drone has sent a group of bighorn sheep scattering, and uh, it's actually separated uh, the mothers from their young so that of course could be a problem. How close does a drone have to be to a wild animal to actually affect its behavior? Scientists found that in 80% of trials, drones could come within four meters of semi-captive flamingos and green shanks before altering their visual behavior. They also found that the drone's approach angle affected the animal's behavior more than anything else. Approaching from a more oblique angle were less likely to show an alteration in behavior, but as the angle of approach moved closer to 90 degrees, the birds reacted more strongly. Now this might have been because these were water birds they were studying and for a lot of water birds or main predators approach from above not from the side. So obviously this study was only done with birds. This study was just scratching the surface. But another study tried to answer another question, which basically asked, how does a drone actually affect an animal's stress levels uh, physiologically, even if that animal is showing no visual sign of alteration in its behavior? So in this study, scientists flew drones near these wild bears 17 different times. Interestingly, almost all of the bears that they tested did not even act like they were bothered. They showed almost no alteration of behavior. These scientists had an ability to measure the heart rates of the bears. They measured their heart rates by uh, sensors in the heart that were previously implanted in their hearts. And they found that in all of the trials that the bears' heart rates increased significantly. There was a big boost in their heart rate when they were approached by the drone. And then when the drone left, their heart rate started to slow down. Some scientists said that this is not really a significant sign of stress that, you know, is maybe just sort of very slight stress of them being curious of the drone. And then, you know, they were fine once the drone went away. But the study was really important because it showed that, you know, again, just because an animal doesn't show any alteration in behavior to a drone, a drone may cause it stress. But then more recently, there was a meta-analysis in which they looked at all of the studies that 
investigated the impacts of drones on wildlife and they essentially just tried to conclude what were the major factors that affected the stress levels or the disruption levels in animals. So they found that reactions of animals to drones depended on two different types of factors. One were the attributes of the actual drone, so the size of the drone, the type of motor it had, the way that the drone was moving, the approach angle, and then also the characteristics of the animals themselves. The type of animal, its life history stage, so for example, if it's in mating or not, and the level of aggregation, so was it a big group of animals or a small group of animals? So they found that target-oriented flight patterns, which is when a drone is specifically going straight towards an animal and not just passing by. That affected animals most. They found that bigger drones affected animals most. And they also found that the noisier their drone was, that affected animals the most. And animals in non-breeding season were more likely to show responses to drones. And they say that might be because animals are more reluctant to leave their babies. However, in some situations, animals showed very aggressive behavior to drones, which might have been because they were trying to protect their babies. If animals were in larger groups, they were more likely to show responses to drones. Birds out of all taxa are more likely to show responses to drones. And there's been a number of different cases where birds have actually actively attacked a drone. But exactly how serious a threat from a drone affects animals over time really depends on how often those animals are being disturbed by drones over time. So for example, if some animals are frequently disturbed, uh, they'll be more likely to abandon an area. However, that is not to say that some animals can't eventually become more accustomed to drones as well because, for example, animals have become accustomed to other types of human activity like cars, planes, other things that are much noisier than drones. Another thing to take into account as well though is that drones make a certain type of noise and even though they might not be overall as loud as like an airplane they just make a different type of noise that might be able to be detected in a different way in some cases animals can actually attack drones because they feel like that drone is invading their territory which might cause them stress as well and there's been plenty of documented cases of birds of prey attacking drones so the thing is there's definitely been studies that have shown that drones can absolutely impact wildlife it can absolutely stress out wildlife there still have been no studies on the long-term cumulative effects on the stress and behavior of animals just because drones haven't been around for that long and again there just still needs to be a lot more research in general on the immediate impacts of drones on wildlife. But the authors of this main analysis gave a set of guidelines that should be adopted legally. They're specifically for really uh, biologists who are using drones to study wildlife. But I will talk about the actual benefits of drones to wildlife in a second. But here's some of the guidelines and they don't all apply to recreational drone users, but I think it's really important to hear them all. So the first one is that only a reliable and experienced pilot of a drone should be flying a drone. You should try to use a drone that does not make as much noise. You should launch the drone at least 100 to 300 meters away from where the wildlife is. You should conduct your flight as short as possible. You should fly at the highest altitude possible. You should avoid maneuvering above the animals. Do a lawnmower like flight pattern, which I assume means kind of going like this to cover a whole area. You should minimize your flights around sensitive species and also species that are breeding. Avoid using a drone that could potentially resemble a predator shape. You should avoid close distance direct approaches and favor more indirect approaches to animals. You should monitor your target animals before, after, and during the flight. If you're doing nest inspections, like for example, using a drone to monitor the nest of an eagle or something, you should fly at a time when the chicks and the eggs are out of risk. And if you're flying in an animal's territory, like a raptor's territory, and you know that raptor could exhibit aggressive behavior towards the drone, try to fly it like in the middle of the day at high temperatures when you know that raptor is going to be less likely to attack the drone. So again, all of these guidelines are not necessarily applicable to you if you're a recreational drone flyer. Uh, but they're made for biologists who are trying to monitor wildlife. But I think it's really important to consider all those even when you're flying your recreational drone. I really like flying my drone in natural areas. In terms of safety, 
I just don't have to worry about humans. So I just never really thought about it as much when I flew it over, you know, just an open forest and conservation land. But the truth is, there could be wildlife that's underneath your drone. So I would say, yeah, take all those guidelines into consideration. And most of all, just research the land. Are there any rare or sensitive species there? You know, how close is your drone actually gonna get to that wildlife? Make sure also that it's just a legal place. Flying a drone is actually banned in all national parks. My common sense tells me that if you are in a place where you know flying your drone is legal and it's a wide open wild area and you know that there's not a sensitive species that's not breeding there and as long as you're not specifically targeting any animal, I see no reason why you can't fly a drone high in the sky. But of course, just use your common sense and judge each situation separately. One other thing I just wanted to add before closing out this video is that drones could have some big benefits to wildlife as well if they're used correctly and safely for the wildlife. Those guidelines that I gave were for biologists who are using drones to monitor wildlife, and that is a new emerging field, a new way to record data, because it turns out that drones in a lot of situations could potentially have less of an impact on wildlife than other field survey methods, for example, planes or foot traffic, and you know, using cars to get to your field site. Maybe a drone is the better way to go. And I also read about how drones could potentially be used as surveillance and security for poachers in places. But again, as a recreational drone user, no matter who you are, if you wanna minimize your impact on wildlife, which you definitely should, just make sure that you abide by these guidelines and use your common sense in all situations. Anyways guys, if you want more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. I teach you how to enjoy the natural world. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoy nature sometime soon.